All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Robin Graham, who is over the other side of the country, just outside Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. How are you doing, Robin? I'm great. Thanks, John. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and Robin is the founder and owner of Robin Graham LLC and the creator of Purpose to Results, Success Without Social Method, with an emphasis on emphasis on mindset, strategy, and action for one-stop business growth coaching. And she helps small business owners, entrepreneurs, especially those in health and wellness, health coaches, life coaches, uh, uh, and creative start and grow sustainable businesses. Um, and you're also the host of your own podcast, The Robin Graham Show, and you're a speaker and a best-selling author of You, Me, and Anxiety, Take Action Over Anxiety to Enjoy Being You. Hey, You, Me, and Anxiety, I think that probably resonates with an awful lot of people uh, listening out <laughs> here, because I think we, we've, yes. all, we've all had that. We've all had that lovely companion visit us at times, I'm sure. Um, what we're going to talk about today is ditch social altogether and create a lifetime of earning potential sounds very uh counterintuitive to the world we live in today robin yes it's definitely going against the grain right and what everyone tells us we have to do right so tell me how you came to this uh, first of all explain what it is and then tell me how you came to this yeah absolutely so a couple of years ago, I just felt this strong calling to get off of social media. And so I did a sabbatical from it to see what would happen with my business. Would I get fewer clients? Would my follower accounts drop? What would happen? And I did it for kind of, I guess, mental health reasons. Like I was experiencing some burnout and I just felt like I was being overwhelmed by shoulds and must do's and all of these things on social media in addition to just the distraction and the mindset that it can influence right in terms mm -hmm. of comparison imposter syndrome and those kind of things so i i took a break for about six weeks and i saw no change in fact i got more clients than what i'd had before and so i thought well okay let's see what happens if we continue on this path? And at that time, I decided I would share the podcast episodes periodically, but I was, and I would share them in my stories, but I wasn't going to spend a lot of time creating content for Instagram anymore. Mm -hmm. That I was actually going to focus on more, have more focus on search engine optimization on my website, right. writing more blog posts, and doing more podcast episodes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have done since. And that is what. I teach my clients so that they can build that solid foundation for sustainable success. So they're building that foundation by creating a strong personal brand, by having a website that has search engine optimization, and then using digital marketing strategies that are mm. not social media because we don't own those platforms. Right. So let's emphasize what emphasize what we can control, what we do have, the ability to maintain and access on our own without somebody dictating who sees what we put out there. No, and absolutely. And so from from what I'm from what I'm hearing from what you said is you kind of went from moved away from and let's call social media platforms like Instagram and the rest of them as I mean sound bites, right? It's a sound bite. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh look, you know, quick glimpse of something, etc. Lacky. Very superficial. Unfortunately, as you say, you know, our human, our, our brains being what they are, we see a snapshot of something and then we build a whole scenario around it, which is more often than not way off the mark, but just ends up upsetting ourselves probably. So you went more for, for substance and death. Is that, is, would that be fair? Yeah, absolutely. And I believe that we can provide more value when we can reach more people and that's what search engine optimization does for us mm -hmm. in addition we have so many tools like to build our email list and to have more intimate relationships with our clients just by showing up more frequently but in a way that is authentic and organic for us versus being told we have to do something that doesn't necessarily feel right most of my clients have come from 
corporate or nine to five, they've been very successful, but they're transitioning into this world of entrepreneurship, which can be anxiety provoking and overwhelming in and of itself. A lot of them say, I don't know where to begin, or I don't know what steps to take in the right order and all of that. And they go to social media because everybody's telling them, oh, you're going to build your business. You have to be on social media. And it just becomes this place of overwhelm and frustration because they're starting their content creation there. And then they don't have anything that is like evergreen or yep. truly substantial or cornerstone. And so that's where I like to begin. Yeah. And it's a really interesting point because I know, you know, people need their digital brand. You need your, you know, you need your personal brand. You need it out there. You need it to be very, you know, credible and validated. Um, but like you said, I think, a lot of people, when they start this journey, especially if they start in the social media uh, and work backwards, I think you're correct. I think that's where inauthenticity creeps in because they feel like they have to be a certain way on certain platforms and whatever. And that just may not be authentically you. Whereas if you're if you're somebody of substance, maybe somebody thoughtful, whatever, as you said, creating content of substance and focusing on building traffic to that is going to help you far more than presenting yourself in a very superficial way that just really is not representative of who you are. Mm -hmm. That's very true. And I think when we, when we start out searching for answers or recommendations on a platform like social media, it can number one, be intimidating, but it gives us this false sense of, what we need to do to be successful. And what we don't need to do is let other people's brands influence our brand. Mm -hmm. We need to stand, you know, in the foundation of who we are at the core, what our values are and stay aligned with that. Or otherwise we're going to create confusion and confused people don't buy. So we want to maintain that, that core value of who our personal brand is representing. And that's to me, very key. Yeah, yeah. I was always say on this podcast, I always quote my compatriot Oscar Wilde uh, in that, you know, be yourself because everyone else is taken. And and I yeah. think that, and I, and I think there's, you know, there's a, obviously a profoundness in that. But but I th I think it it is it is difficult because I think you end up, like you said, with this some superficial or inauthentic on on social media, maybe copying, as you said, there's a tendency to sort of go, oh. This looks like in my business, this has been successful for these people. Therefore, I need to be like that. And that, and again, that's not who you are. And and in reality, what what do you think people really crave most right now? It's that it's that authenticity, isn't it? It's knowing that mm -hmm. I'm dealing with somebody real who is who they who they present themselves as. I, people want genuine connection, and I think that's why relationship marketing is so successful is because people need that connection, the trust. They want to know that if they're working with someone, they're going to get what that person said they're going to get. Mm -hmm. And not that that doesn't happen by sure. people who market on social media. Absolutely, it, do it does and it can. But I think when you have built your personal brand in a way that truly represents you, you're going to build that trust factor faster and you're going to have more success faster. Mm -hmm. And that success is going to be sustainable because you were always aligned with your values and those you're not going to waver on. Yeah. And, and that's a really good point, though, because I think sometimes people dive into uh, and dive into this and even building their personal brand without first asking, like, who who am I really? You know, and how do I really you know, how do I want to be seen in the world? Like, who is the true me? So I think sometimes people jump into it without doing that work first. And then you have to almost kind of deconstruct. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to say, too. You know, if you build the foundation first and I, I consider your personal brand part of that foundation, mm -hmm. the clarity around what differentiates you? What makes you unique? How do you serve people in a way that is different than how other people who who serve the people that you serve do it? And I think it's really important to have that substantial differentiating factor. What makes you unique? And from there, you craft that messaging that resonates with your soulmate clients. And that's on your website. So then that's search engine optimized. So those people who really need your help and are going to 
love you and trust you, they're going to be able to find you. We know that people go to social media more for information. They're, they're just seeking and they're scrolling, but when they go to Google, they're ready to buy. They're ready for a solution. And that's why I believe that website is so important. Sure, you can start your business on social media, but what happens if that platform is hacked or goes away tomorrow? I mean, we've all seen when Instagram went down or Twitter went down and the whole world is in the state of panic. If you have your website and you have an email list, you can reach your people at mm -hmm. any time from anywhere. And that doesn't change. Yeah. And and it and it, it's interesting because, you know, I was thinking, uh, you know, timing is timing is always everything. But if you think about the work that you're doing right now, it's at a time when social media when people are, are starting to go hmm you know we've got deep fakes you know you've got those things on social media where you think it's the person you know giving a press conference and then you hear them saying outrageous things and you go oh it's, it's a deep it's a faked one or whatever but there's so much you know there's so much kind of you know fakery and all of that that i think um being able to focus away from that and focus on where you know there is people feel at least there is more authenticity there's more ways to get to know you on on a deeper level i think that i think the the timing may be may be very may be perfect for what you're doing right now to be honest well thank you i hope so <laughs> <laughs> i certainly want to continue to grow um mm -hmm. and most importantly i want to help other people grow and achieve the levels of success that they desire mm -hmm. and you know, what you said is so true, and we're experiencing this more and more with AI. Yeah. And so what you see on social media is even more intimidating, I think, because it mm. looks so perfect. Yep. And what we really need to, to understand is that a lot of people, especially those people who have been in a successful career where social media hasn't been their job, it hasn't been a role that they've had to play, right, to manage those accounts and create that content. They don't want to be there. They yeah. want to be there for scrolling, just for fun, or to what, watch what their kids are doing or their mm -hmm. nieces and nephews. But they don't want to spend hours and hours on these platforms or with their phone in their hand. They're not accustomed to it. Yeah. And I, I feel like when people are shooting them into doing it, it, it just it is more intimidating. And really, those are the people that aren't building businesses themselves. They just have heard that, or seen businesses on Instagram and they think, oh, well, they're successful because they're on Instagram. But that's not the case. Most successful entrepreneurs and business mm -hmm. owners have established themselves off of those social platforms long before they went onto the yeah. social platforms. And they went to the social platforms because they felt they had to. And it was just an add on, an additional focus for their marketing efforts. Yeah, no, established. yeah, I think that's a, a really excellent point. And unfortunately, a lot of the b people who are making money on social media with their businesses are the ones selling courses that tell other people how to make money on social media and they make the money from the courses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. the other people never make anything, but there you go. It's, you know, these, these lovely puns, you know, whatever you call them, pyramid schemes. But, um, but getting back to when you've, when you've worked with some of your clients, like, has this been, you know, when you take on a client and you say, okay, we're going to go in this different direction here, have some of them initially been like a little reticent and wondering like, Ooh, is this going to harm me? Or, or have they, um, have they been surprised at the, the, the outcome? Actually, all the people that come to me have said to me, I don't want to be on social media. Right. And so they're, they are thrilled that I'm teaching them other ways that they can build their business to stand out as the expert mm -hmm. that they truly are and be able to attract clients that are really good fits, ideal fits, perfect fits mm -hmm. for them and their business where they're going to feel fulfilled working with them while also creating that source of revenue and then being able to have an impact for other people. Mm -hmm. And how do you, how do you help them like find their true voice? Because I feel like that's really part of building an authentic brand is having it in in a, in your true authentic voice. And like I said, that's different for different people. It's no good trying to copy somebody else because you're not going to come across as authentic. And sometimes you, you people are a little reluctant about that because you you mentioned earlier like imposter syndrome and all of that. So how do you help people really find and and be able to articulate their authentic voice? So we do a series of exercises and we really do a lot of soul searching 
for, you know, who we are from and what about our journey, life journey, career journey has led us right to where we are today. And all of those things compound to differentiate us from everybody else that's doing something similar to what we're doing. And, you know, some of those exercises include asking friends and family, what words do you use to describe me? Because mm -hmm. oftentimes we are so in our head, own heads or, you know, so um, in our everyday lives that we really don't see what we bring to the table. Another question to ask is, what do people quite frequently say, can I pick your brain about? And then that leads to, to where people see that you're really shining. That's where your expertise lies. And then we like to do exercises where we look at what are your values, your visions, and passions? Because where those three merge, like in a Venn diagram, that's where you're going to feel the most fulfilled and be able to have the most impact. And then we really look at the the soulmate client. Who who is that person and what are their pain points? What are their needs, wants and desires and how can you present a solution to them? And then we start working on that core message. And that core message doesn't have to be lengthy, but it really becomes about the who, what, how and why of everything that you're doing to communicate that effectively to that person that you're meant to help and serve. Mm -hmm. And, and do, do you find that, because uh, I've helped some people in the past, and one of the things that I've, I've it's often surprised me is, you know, especially when you're helping somebody maybe build their, build their brand, or you're helping them even do a resume, and they think, well, you know, I haven't really done much, you know, I, may, I really don't have a very interesting, back. and then you go, okay, well, let's explore it, and let's go back to it, and then you think, wow, you know, you overcame this, you did that, you, you know, and you're suddenly saying to them, look, look at all the things you have achieved, you may be, you know, downplaying them, but actually, this is a great story of where you got to today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because people, and you know, we're taught to be humble, right? We're mm -hmm. not we're taught that being proud isn't a good thing. And so we often quiet our own assets or our own strengths. We, we don't see ourselves the way other people see us. And that's why I like to bring other people into that equation because, and, and what you said too, about, you know, different experiences we go through, they, they're formative. Mm -hmm. And what we overcame in terms of mistakes or failures or even traumas really did, define who we are and how we approach other people, the relationships yep. we're able to build and all of those things that are absolutely crucial for building a personal brand and a successful business. Yeah. And that's why I always think everybody's story is, is fascinating in, in different ways. And, and you're right. I think, you know, we, we tend to downplay and, uh, and yeah, I, I, you know, we tend to sort of want to be humble. You want to grow up in Ireland where it's actually to the extreme, you know, where you absolutely don't ever <laughs> say anything about yourself because other people bring you back down to earth very quickly. Um, but <laughs> but it is something that eventually, you know, you have to sort of you have to, you know, help people look at and say, no, actually, actually, you should be should be proud of the journey that you have you've been on. Yeah. And it's and it's not necessarily bragging about yourself yeah. or being um, overly proud mm -hmm. in a way that's going to put off other people. Yeah. It's a way of telling your story so people can see the great things about you that can help them. Mm -hmm. No, ab absolutely. Absolutely. And and I also think, I mean, it, and then key to what you're saying, obviously, also is on the technical side is like, you know, doing proper SEO, doing proper um, relationship marketing. And I think the good news there is, is that, uh, you know, obviously, there's lots of people that can help you. But because there's so many people over on the social platforms, like trying to uh, optimize themselves over there, you know, if you're focused, if you're focused in a different direction, you're probably actually getting a little jump on some people who may be neglecting that. I mean, I hope I hope so. What I can tell you is that I've had so many clients come to me who have spent tens of thousands of dollars on a website and brand assets and they have zero SEO. So they mm -hmm. thought that for years or months that their website was working for them and that they and they couldn't figure out why they weren't getting clients. Well, if it's not done right, no matter how much you spend, doesn't mean it's better than anybody else's. So 
it's absolutely critical for people to understand what needs to go into the foundation of your business and mm -hmm. how to build upon that. But that SEO, if you don't have an understanding of that, it's search engine optimization and it's basically how your website will show up as a result to a question or an inquiry that someone else puts in to a Google search bar. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that on your website, people aren't going to be able to find you. Yeah, yeah. And there are, and there, you know, and sometimes people get are daunted because they think, oh, this is going to cost me a fortune. But the reality is there's things you can learn to do yourselves as experts. You can mm -hmm. you can bring from the outside. Yeah, Upwork is great for you know finding you know contractors and things like that. But it's I mean, once I think people understand it, it's not quite as daunting as it seems on the outside. No, no, it, it's not. And I actually on my website, I have a free um, intro to SEO where I show the back end of a website and how you do this. And every platform is different. Every platform mm -hmm. is unique. And that is something that complicates it a little bit. However, there are just certain things that if you can recognize that they're important and do them, they're going to be a game changer. And these things are the simple things, just identifying a key phrase, having a meta description, having an SEO title and a slug. And the slug is the back end of the URL, putting the, um, the information on an image, you know, that so that your key phrases are attached to images. Those are just small things yeah. that you can do that are going to make a big difference in mm -hmm. terms of how you show up online. Yeah, no, and absolutely, and and the and the nice thing now is there's tools that can help you help you identify those, and and so you know it's mm -hmm. not something you have to do completely on your own. But that's great that you said there's that resource on your website because uh, all of Robin's information will be below this video, and I would encourage you to go and check it out and and see if you're doing your SEO properly. Um, listen, Robin, this has been fantastic. But before you go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Yes. So I work primarily with women and I help them build that solid foundation for sustainable success. So women who have been in corporate, they've had successful careers, or maybe they had a successful career, stayed home for a while with their kids. And either way, they're entering that world of business ownership and entrepreneurship. And it feels overwhelming and daunting. And I simplify that process for them. I coach and give strategies, mentor. So it's kind of a combination. I'm a strategist and a creative at heart. So it makes things super fun to be able to, to work together and um, present the ideas at the same time as, as walking them through the different steps and strategies and phases of that business growth. I'm also the author, as you said, of You, Me, and Anxiety, which is the my memoir, my journey, uh, lifelong journey with anxiety. And the one book is for teen girls and the other book is for their parents. And there's a journal that accompanies them with that. And it's basically my mindset work strategies in terms of, you know, our beliefs influence and empower our emotions and our thoughts, which then determine what our um, emotions and feelings are and which trigger or influence those choices that we make, the behaviors we choose. And those determine our outcomes and our results. So all of those things are incorporated into my business model and what I do for other people. Fantastic. And like I said, it'll be below this video. And I'd encourage you to, yeah, absolutely encourage, uh, you know, parents and, you know, mothers and whatever that to, uh, to check out the, the anxiety, anxiety book. It's, look, it's a tough world for our, for our kids these days, you know, I mean, with all with social media, with all these pressures and stuff. So their anxiety levels are at all time highs, I think. Uh, uh, so uh, I encourage you to go check it out. So thank you, Robin. Thank you for all the insights you shared today. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.